chapter 4, Jesus and his disciples, they're all traveling and they're, they're traveling through Samaria and they stop outside of a town called Sychar. And Jesus waits at the well outside the, the village and his disciples, they go in and they go in to buy food. And as Jesus is sitting there alone, a Samaritan woman comes to the well and Jesus and her, they have a conversation. And one of the things that he tells her is he says, for the time is coming when you will no longer worship on this mountain. So you won't worship here in this mountain here by Sakar, by Jacob's well here or in Jerusalem. For a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For those are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Am I what you're seeking? Oh, am I what you're seeking, my Father? Am I what you're seeking? Good morning. Welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from AriseNow.ca. Yes, well, we are so delighted that we have this opportunity to be with you again today and, um, and that you've taken time to join us. And so, so thank you. And we just invite you to um, uh, say hello in the chat. Let us know you're here. And I see that John is. So yeah. good morning yes, to you, good morning, dear John. John. And um, yeah, and whether you're watching live or watching later on the replay, you can still say hi, uh, even if it's not live. So we're glad for those who watch whenever they can, right? That's right. Uh, sort of <laughs> That's the, right. the beauty of the technology, right? Yeah. So um, we like here. when you're with us on a Sunday morning. And if you can't, we <clears> like <throat> when you're check us out later. Yeah. Listen through, later. Yeah, through the week. And yeah. we know that there's some who do that regularly. And so we're, we're grateful for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yes, so we um, uh, have been going through Ephesians chapter one. Um, and before we get into that today, I was just kind of feeling really prompted um, by the spirit this morning that uh, just to spend a, a few minutes here just encouraging you uh, uh, that that um, what I was sensing is is that there's there's some of you who are watching who are feeling like giving up, uh, and, and I'm not sure what that means. It um, if if that's you, you'll you'll know what that means for your situation. Whether it's giving up on a relationship, giving up on uh, a struggle you're having, uh, maybe internally, giving up on um, on life, even uh, giving up on something, and and uh, whatever it may be, uh, the word of the Lord for you today is is stick with it. Do not give up. Uh, uh, persevere through and uh, there is a breakthrough. There is a victory. There is uh, uh, something uh, that is going to shift uh, on your behalf uh, in the near future and, and you need to stick with it. And so we want to encourage you this morning to not give up. Uh, because that is uh, that's a word that the Lord often speaks to us, isn't it, Angie? 
uh, do not give up because yeah. we, you know, in the midst of the journey, there's times where where we uh, can let uh, things overwhelm us or or we feel hopeless or uh, uh, we feel stuck and we're like, is anything ever, is something, like, is this ever going to change? Is this, is this what I'm going to be struggling with forever? And, uh, and we do not want to give up because uh, the breakthrough comes when we stick with it and we persevere. And so, so Angie, maybe um, would you like to just lead us in a, in a prayer this morning right. uh, for, for the perseverance to endure and stick with it and for the breakthrough that each one um, is needing in their own unique situation. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you're with us. Mm -hmm. We thank you that you see all, even as I was singing, your eyes are roaming about the earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're looking, you're watching. Yes. You're, you're well aware of every detail. And so you see the situations and we know that you're a good God. Yes, Lord. That you give us what we need when we need it. Mm -hmm. And so we seek you and we thank you for your word, which tells us that, that you, you are able. Yes. You are well able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond what we ask or imagine. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we just ask that you would come. You're the God of the breakthrough. You're yes. the God that moves us from one place to another. You guide our way. Even as you led the children of Israel through the wilderness, through the dry places, through the places where they were thirsty and they were hungry and they didn't know whether they were going to make it or not, you mm -hmm. led them. And you led them and you brought them into a land of promises, your goodness. Yes. And you are faithful Thank to do Lord. that. And so, Father, I pray that you would give us eyes to see yeah. what it is that we need to see today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your daily bread, for your nourishment, for the things that we need today. You say that you will provide them. Yes. And we thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for hope and thank you for faith and let them grow in abundance in our lives. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I just want to say as well, last week we were talking about hope. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't catch the program from last week, that if, if you, this is you, you yeah. might want to go back and watch that one because I think there's some things in that one that can speak to our hearts too around right. hope um, and, the, and the rough places in our lives. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah. yeah there's... Um, uh, just different verses. One that comes to mind is, um, uh, I think it's Galatians chapter 6. Uh, it's, well, I'll start in verse 7 because I don't remember the exact reference for the verse I want to get to, which isn't verse 7, but it says, <clears throat> it says, uh, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. For, um, uh, is that how it goes? I'm trying <laughs> What was the reference? <laughs> Galatians 6, 7. Okay, okay. Um, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Um, anyway, the part I wanted to get <laughs> is a couple verses later, which says, um, Just a minute. Uh, I'm let us it. do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers, for we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. But why don't you start in verse... I'm, I'll just start and I'll read the whole. Uh, verse 7. Yeah. Verse seven. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, right. from that nature, will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, and we're talking about the Holy Spirit here, because there's all sorts of other spirits. Yeah. Um, the one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit, will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, that, that's the part I wanted. Therefore, yep. as we have opportunity, let us mm. do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Right. Well, thank you for bailing me out of my little uh, uh, brain cramp <laughs> from the passage that I have memorized. But yes, let us not become weary in doing good. Uh, for we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Right. So we're in, all in life are the, the things that we do, the words we speak, the actions that we mm -hmm. do, they're seeds right. that are going out. And they will bring back more of what we're sowing. That's right. And we want, so we want to keep on sowing good seeds and uh, good actions, good words. Uh, that's all part of the good seeds, uh, even if we don't feel like it and, and uh, sticking with it. 
There's one more verse, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Shall verse 16. No, I don't think you need to. I think I got it. So it says, that Paul is writing, he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, for our light and momentary afflictions are achieving for us an eternal glory which far outweighs them all. Uh, isn't that interesting? Our light and momentary afflictions. Uh, Paul certainly had some things that I, I wouldn't consider light and momentary, uh, and that's how he identified some of his struggles. Right, right. I think what he's saying is we don't feel like they're that way, mm -hmm. but in the overall scheme of things, right. it's a short. It will be a short time. Yeah. You know, and I think once we get to the other side of some of them, you don't remember the whole anguish or whatever it is that you've been going through yeah. once you get to the other side because there's there's joy and there's you know there's more uh more life on yeah, the other and, side of the and then he trials goes on, and tribulations he goes on then and he tells us how to do that he says therefore we fix our eyes not on what is seen that is the things happening around us but on what is unseen for what is seen is temporal and what is unseen is eternal and so that's that's the key you know what are we going to fix our eyes on in the midst of the journey right uh, and so i hope that's uh, been an encouragement to you that you uh, you stick with it and you do not give up uh, with whatever you are facing and keep calling out to god and he is going to bring you through and uh, and lead you and guide you each and every day so that you can walk in uh, new levels of victory uh, each day as we travel with him uh, on this wonderful journey of life and so we are going to continue with Ephesians chapter 1. Um, we're, we're not going to finish today. We are going to finish one of these weeks. <laughs> but, soon. Yeah, soon but, and very soon. <clears throat> so we're in the, in the second part of the chapter, which uh, began in verse 15 with uh, Paul writing and saying, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for the saints, the love that you have for each other, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. And, uh, and, you know, I've said before, I'll say it again, is like he was identifying these people were, were known. They, they had a good faith in Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like I got a little frog in my throat this morning. <laughs> Just waiting, waiting for it to jump out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very pleasant image. No, no, but I, well, when you say frog, what do frogs do? They jump, they right? Jump. Yes. Uh, anyway, they crawl too. Yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, um, where was? Yes, they were known for their faith in the Lord Jesus and their love for each other. And we think, well, that what more could there be? Well, then he goes on and he says, there's things he's continually praying for them. He says, for I continually ask uh, God, our Father, the God the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will know him better. And we talked about that, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, and that is so that the hidden things can be revealed. There can be this aha, this enlightenment, this, this, this understanding, this knowing of things that we can't know apart from the spirit of God revealing them to us, right? right. And so... <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> do you have some water? I, I do. Um, let me have a little sip. <clears throat> and then he goes on and he says that he's praying some more things. He's saying, I pray also that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints and the incomparably great power for us who believe. And so, so there's this this enlightening of our hearts, and we spent a while, I think a whole week, talking about our hearts. And last week, we spent the whole time talking about the hope to, the, to which we have been called. Right. And we, we were all this talk, talk about hope, which you had mentioned. If you missed that, we want to encourage you to, to go back and watch that uh, so that you can uh, have hope arise in your heart uh, the God of all hope, uh, Romans 15, 13, may the God of all hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you and I, that we can overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that we conjure up on our, on our own. Uh, it's as we put our faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit fills us up and we live in that relationship so that, uh, I love that image, Angie, overflowing with hope yeah. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope is a confident expectation uh, not in ourselves, but it's in God and who He is and what He said He will do. When you talk about an overflow, like Jesus talked about 
um, the words that come out of our mouth, they, 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 they come from the heart, mm -hmm. right? So, so whatever is, is flowing out of our mouth is, is in our heart, right? Right, And so there's an overflow. And so that could be a good overflow or a bad overflow. And we, we're, we're after the good right. overflow. And But it's an, it's an indicative because, yeah, he says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to your words. <laughs> it's going to indicate what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. And so but today we want to pick up this theme of the inheritance. Um, and it says, the riches of the glorious inheritance in the saints. And so uh, I had always uh, interpreted this verse as the riches of, uh, of the glorious inheritance that is given to us as his saints. Yes. Right. And that is one, as I was doing some study, there's sort of a, there's commonly thought of as there's two ways to kind of, excuse me, to interpret this verse. And that would be one. And the other way. Well, just let's, can we start, a, just say, because we're co-heirs with Jesus, right? Right, right. I mean, so there's a lot of verses that talk about that. I'm probably going to talk more about right, that, right? Right, right. We'll but, identify some of those verses. But their other thought, uh, train of thought from this verse is that we, as followers of Jesus, as his people, or as it's identified in this passage, as, as the saints of yeah. God, that we are actually his inheritance. Yeah. And so that is, uh, that's kind of an interesting one, because we often don't think of ourselves, uh, at least I know I don't, in that way. Mm. That, uh, that, that God has called you and I as his people, and that we are so special to him that he views us as his inheritance and so so let's start with that one for a little bit okay and so um so in deuteronomy 32 verse 9 uh it tells us uh and this is back in the old testament where um moses is writing and he's talking about uh how god views his people which were the children of israel uh in the old testament the people that he had called and uh and it says that, that, that they are the Lord's, uh, the Lord's portion is his people. Mm -hmm. And Jacob, uh, which was Israel, right. is his allotted inheritance. And so we have that, that theme, that idea, that the people of God are actually his, and he views them as his inheritance. Yes. And I think it's kind of interesting to ponder that because it, it helps us to realize how precious we are in the sight of God. And it also helps us to understand why he would have sent his only son then to redeem us. It's, it's, there's this verse in um, Titus chapter uh, 2 where it's, uh, it's going on about grace um, and it, it tells us that um, for he redeemed us and set us, uh, called us to be a people that are his very own. I think that's around Titus chapter 2 verse uh, 12 or 13 or 14 in that in that range so he he wanted to redeem us so that we could become his people a people that are his very own a people that are his inheritance mm -hmm. and paul is writing in this passage and he's saying the riches of the of his glorious inheritance that is made known or that is is because of the saints the riches of his glorious inheritance in the in saints. In the saints is how it's worded right. yeah. in this translation anyways. Yeah. And, uh, and so I just, um, uh, that was kind of, as I was doing some study, that was kind of a new revelation for me because I had always read it the other way. Mm -hmm. and, I, and there are certainly scriptures um, that support kind of either interpretation of this passage. Uh, and so I think it's not either or, it's both. Well, I think that um, often the Lord says certain things or th things are written and you can, it's, it's a, there's layers of understanding, as I like to say, mm -hmm. um, you know, like it's not just one truth, it's full of truths yeah. of God, the yeah. truth, the truths of God. I just right? want to say a quick hello to Mariana, who said good morning, and to Carrie from Thunder Bay, good morning to you as well. And uh, yeah, if, and if others of you have uh, come on, and uh, feel free to say hello as well. Let us know how you're doing, and, and any other comments or questions you might have about what we're uh, what we're talking about. So, but yes, so the riches of the glorious inheritance of the saints. So, so that is is just incredible to ponder. 
that uh, that we are the inheritance of God, uh, and that that He views us in that way, and He He uh, values us enough that He sent, would send His Son to redeem us, to bring us into that place where we could be as an inheritance, to redeem for Himself a people that are His very own. It's kind of an interesting concept because when someone receives an inheritance, it's receiving um, uh, the, the property, the goods, the um, you know could be. It, titles in you know of those who have gone before should so be that parents or or you know you could inherit I guess from somebody else who isn't your parents but in one way to look at it it's like you're inheriting the work of their hands mm -hmm. the work of their life you know um, that's what you're inheriting all the all the all what they've stored up right all what they've done you are inheriting that and it's interesting in this thing, it's like Jesus did the work, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm like, and so God did it and he's inheriting his, his own goodness, mm -hmm. his own work. Like, I just kind of brings up for me the, uh, when Jesus had said, when, when um, he was being questioned and, and um, about working on the Sabbath and he said, my father's always at work and I'm at work, I'm, I'm working too, like mm -hmm. that idea. And in Genesis, it talked about, you know, he, he, he did his work for six days and then he rested on the seventh day, you know, and you think he was done, but he wasn't done. There was more to do. Mm -hmm. He had to redeem his people. Yeah. And so he, there was some more work that he did till Jesus was on the cross and he said, it is finished. And then he could enter into this inheritance, mm -hmm. which is still going on, you know, because it's us and it's those that are being saved, it's those who are believing, and it's it carries on. Um, but what what he did is done. He's done everything that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Now we just need to enter into it. That's right, it, and, and it's available to us. There yeah. isn't anything more that God needs to do for you and I to experience the fullness of all He has for us, mm -hmm. which is a is a wonderful thought. Uh, and and so yeah, it's it's just being it needs to be revealed in our lives. Yeah, yeah, and and, and like you said, there's layers of understanding, and we don't understand it all right away. Yeah. Uh, we grow in that, and that's this where this whole spirit of wisdom and revelation and the eyes of our heart being enlightened. It's it's sort of just uh, uh, there are some major moments along the way, but it's uh, it's ongoing. It's, it's part of, it's the beautiful part of this journey of this relationship with Jesus is that it's every day is a new day and it's exciting to see what is going to be revealed, what level of understanding we're going to grow in and, and how we're going to experience uh, that relationship with Jesus every day. Uh, as it says in Colossians chapter 2, I think it's verse 4 or 5, it says, uh, um, uh, starting in verse 3, it says about how... Um, uh, um, that you may receive the full riches of complete understanding and may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Tell and me the reference for that again. Colossians 2, verses 3, 4, and 5, or 3 and 4. Colossians, some, Colossians 2. Yeah, yeah. So there's this, um, this wonderful uh, idea that um, that there's so much to learn, and and there's a you know the, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Jesus, mm -hmm. and 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 we get to have them revealed to us as we live in this relationship with the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, and and so so let's uh, let's focus now uh, on the idea that the of what is our inheritance that right. we are heirs because. Um, back in verse 11 of Ephesians 1, it says um, in the NIV, which I was, um, which I've memorized it in, it says, in him you were also chosen. And there's a footnote in the NIV that, for the word chosen, and it says uh, that it could read, in him you were also made heirs. Oh. And, and what is an heir? Uh, heir spelled H E I. Are. Yeah, they're not talking about what we're breathing in. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what does it mean when you're an heir? Well, the dictionary definition of an heir is a person legally entitled to the property or rank of another person on that person's death. Uh, and so, uh, so that's what it means to be an heir. And so, so we have been made heirs. 
we have been chosen. And then in, in uh, a few verses later in Ephesians chapter 1, another verse that we had covered a few weeks back, uh, it says, In him you also believed, having been given the Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of, of his glorious grace, I think is how it ends. And, um, and so, so the Holy Spirit has been given and deposited in each one of us. Paul is writing just a few verses earlier than what we're focusing on today in verse 14. And he's saying that the Holy Spirit is deposited in us is a guarantee of our inheritance. Yes. And, and so that is, um, that's really encouraging. But what does it mean if you're an heir? Like you have this uh, proper, you're legally entitled to something. It's a legal thing. And, uh, and so thinking of it in the natural realm, if, um, if you knew that you were an heir to a fortune of say, you know, a billion dollars, right? like picking a big amount of what we consider to be a big amount of money, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how would that change your life right here and right now? Like even though you don't actually, it's not actually yours just yet, but you know that it's coming, right? Mm -hmm. That you, you know that you are an heir uh, of, a, of a, a large amount of money, say a billion dollars. Right? How would that change? Would that change your perspective on life? Would it, would it cause hope to rise up in you? Would it, um, would it uh, make you walk a little, a little more with your shoulders back? Like, I don't know, like how would it change us? Uh, or would it, w or wouldn't it, right? I mean, it's just, these are the questions I'm uh, inviting you to ponder with me, right? Uh, it, because we think, I think it's good to think of, you know, this, what we consider really valuable here on this earth, and, and how would we respond if that was our inheritance? And then to think of, well, what is our inheritance in Jesus? Right. And, and having a revelation and an understanding of that so that we realize, oh, this should impact our lives way more than having this material inheritance. Right. And I think there's almost two ways to look at this part of it, too. It's like, so there's an inheritance... Um, that verse that talks about there's an inheritance that's kept in heaven for you. And so we know that there's an inheritance for us once, once we pass and we enter into our heavenly reward, right? Mm -hmm. But because Jesus, so that's the one way of looking at it. And then the other way of looking at that part of it is that Jesus already died. And so we have an inheritance that we can start using here and now. Right. Because of what he did. All those treasures that are in Jesus are available for us here and now mm -hmm. to be walking in. And so the, the Holy Spirit is, is, is that guarantee. But that Holy Spirit also works in us to bring transformation mm -hmm. to us. Right? We're, we're no longer the old man, so to speak. We become new in our spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a whole lot that God wants to do. And that's part of our inheritance that's actually working out here and now. Mm -hmm. um, that he's changing us to line up with who he's actually made us to be. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I think that's part of the inheritance because he already died. That power that raised him from the dead works in us. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably get into the power next week. Right, right. <laughs> so, so... Um, let me bring in a couple other scriptures, I think, that help uh, with what we're talking about. So the one is from, uh, uh, well, let's start in Titus chapter 3, verse 7, where it says, So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, that's H-I-E-I-R, heirs, uh, having the hope of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And so, so I'm reminded of when... The rich young ruler came to Jesus. I think the story is in Luke chapter 18, maybe around verse 9 or 10. And he starts off by saying to Jesus these words. He says, he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Right. And, and then Jesus, you know, gives him some explanation, which we're not going to get into that story today. But it's just that was his desire. Excuse me. That was his desire to inherit eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that uh, he realized there was something beyond what he could see, this temporal. It goes back to those verses from 2 Corinthians about we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Right. 
because it, it's it's eternal. It's going to go beyond uh, this temporal world, and you know the millions and billions of dollars that are going to all perish, spoil, and fade. Right, and so that brings us into another verse, which is First Peter chapter one, starting in verse three. I love this passage. It says, "Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." who in his great mercy has given us new birth into a living hope. I think we talked about that part of this verse last week. Who has given us new birth into a living and ho living hope and, in, and uh, through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Okay, then he goes on and, and it says, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or, or fade. fade. Right, and then he goes on and he says, that inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded from or by God's power until the coming uh, revelation when Jesus Christ is revealed. And then it says, um, uh, In this you greatly rejoice, though for a little while you may have to, have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. And so I was like, Peter, you're doing so well here until you bring up the part about suffering and trials. It's like, oh, there's an inheritance that's kept in heaven for us and it's never going to perish, spoil, or fade. And we're greatly rejoicing in this. And except he says then that we're going to have to suffer a little bit. And it goes on then and it talks about that process that, that we go through. And this goes back to what we talked about at the beginning about not giving up because we want to endure through these tough times. Right. Um, because it goes on, these have come so that the, that the, the oh, what's the word that's used? These have come so that the, testing, test, well, the testing of your, no, it's, what's, what's the it's first Peter chapter three, or first Peter chapter one, starting in verse three, but, oh, I got it. These have come so that the proven genuineness oh. of your faith there's a few two-minute wake-up calls on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the proven <laughs> genuineness of your faith. I just love that, uh, that the, the phrase there, proven genuineness of your faith. You know, we want to talk about having faith in Jesus, and we want to have that, and, but we, we want it to be proven genuine. And the only way that it can be proven genuine is when it's tested. Right. It's and like, it's it's like when, when you're in school and you have to take a test after you've learned a certain unit. It right. It proves whether you've learned the lesson or right. not. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So that is just a beautiful passage about the inheritance that is kept in heaven for us, that it brings a great rejoicing within us. Uh, and, then, and then in the midst of that, we're going through some trials and tests so that our faith can be proven genuine. And, and it's, it's, it produces in us this beautiful uh, uh, effect that is of greater worth than, than even gold. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, we need to remind ourselves of that, that this, what we are inheriting, is, is way beyond what we can see with our temporal or in the temporal world around us. Mm -hmm. It's eternal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's this whole thing of eternal life. And eternal life is not just something that we uh, experience forever and ever uh, be after we die. It, it, you know, we begin. Starts here and now. Yeah, now. I mean, our eternal life begins now as a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so the inheritance, yes, uh, you know, after we die and the, the physical bodies function no more, there's this uh, going on uh, that, that we, you know, we will live forever in glory with him in heaven with Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there, there is uh, this, 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 this um, effect of this inheritance on us right here and now in the uh in in the temporal world in which we live mm -hmm. and so we want to encourage you with that today uh that you know just as as if you knew you were going to inherit a one billion dollar uh fortune from somebody that the, how that may change your perspective and change your life here and now well you and i as followers of jesus we have inherited eternal life we have this glorious inheritance that will never perish spoil or fade it's way better than any amount of money or any amount of, uh, of earthly possessions that may come into our possession through an inheritance. Right. And, 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 and when we really get a revelation, and I pray the Holy Spirit brings a revelation to each one today as to what that uh, means in your life today. 
and how that can impact you and that causes faith to rise in you. It causes hope to rise in you and we get a, a sense of our, our calling and our destiny and our, and our identity of who we are in Jesus and we rise up as, as victorious sons and daughters uh, in the kingdom of God and we become all that we are called to be. Uh, let hope and faith rise up in your heart today because of the riches of this glorious inheritance that is available for us and that the Holy Spirit has been deposited in you and I as followers of Jesus as a guarantee. Uh, it's, it's a deposit guaranteeing that inheritance. Yeah. We know that God is faithful and that he will keep his word because he has put the Holy Spirit in us. And for that, we are eternally grateful mm -hmm. and thankful. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. So We're about at that time again. We get a little long-winded, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for joining us. And we, hi, good morning too to, to Mahesh and Mary Ann. So good to have you with us yeah, this morning yeah. too. So delighted for all of you that have joined us this morning. We trust that, uh, that this has been an encouragement to you. We want to remind you uh, to not give up, but to stick with it. Whatever struggle it is you're facing, keep calling out to God. And we're, we'll keep praying for you as well, that you will experience the breakthrough that you need. And we will also keep praying for each one of us that, uh, that we will re receive a revelation, the eyes of our heart being enlightened uh, about this inheritance, that we are the part of God's chosen people. We are an inheritance to him and he is a wonderful inheritance for us. It truly is an incredible blessing that we get to experience as followers of Jesus. So until we meet again. Yes, uh, stay awake, stay alert and come back and join us again next week.